Next up is Brandon Cook. Hey everyone, I'm Brandon. I'm a senior platform engineer at Adobe, and I'm gonna to talk to you about our use of VPF. Um, so I lead the network engineering team for our internal PaaS. Um, we deal with all aspects of static and dynamic networking, um, help design our cloud agnostic uh, architecture. Um, day to day, often troubleshooting broken, slow, or otherwise sad networking. Uh, my team does not deal with happy traffic. Uh, and then when we're not doing that, we're engineering the future. Um, we have over 23,000 employees, which is, you know, has, has its challenges. It's a pretty big company uh, and manage quite a lot of infrastructure um, across cloud and data center. Um, and we also have pretty significant compliance requirements. The one affecting me the most is separation of duties. Uh, you know, I can't, it's not like in a startup where you just uh, own and run all the infrastructure and can SSH into a box. Um, so I don't get to do that. Uh, and then also workload isolation, which uh, I'll, talk, I'll talk about. Uh, so really two uses, uses of BPF uh, indirectly via Cilium, but also a project I started called BPF Insights. Uh, so with Cilium, it uh, gives us, you know, network isolation of uh, tenants on our multi-tenant clusters. We use L3 through L7 policy um, and then uh, selectively open up that policy to allow like service to service communication with a cluster. Um, <clears throat> XDB filtering uh, has been great. Uh, you know, it's something we, we could have written but didn't want to and found it in Cilium. So I was uh, being able to, to drop traffic, you know, in the NIC or um, very very shortly after in the kernel is, is a huge win. Um, and then no more kube proxy uh, that got rid of um, tens of thousands of IP tables rules. Uh, so that was great. Uh, and I just want to say thank you to the Cilium team, you know, not only for what they built, but for how they've been to work with. I've always been met with humility and professionalism, and I just really appreciate that. Um, so BPF Insights. Um, this is a lightweight, always on, runs everywhere, kernel level visibility. Um, you know, we looked at things like like B BCC and um, BPF Trace, and uh, they just, you know, they're 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 good tools. They just weren't what we needed for for what I had in mind for uh, getting this level of always on visibility. Uh, you know, that's uh, also running very lightweight. Um, you know, this, this quote obtaining insights into low level networking. I mean, you know, it really comes out of uh, you know, scars from war rooms, uh, you know, uh, with, you know, maybe a service team or two and an operations team or two, um, trying to debug, you know, low level issues, um, and not having, uh, you know, much worse if there's not a reliable repro. Uh, and so that's really, uh, what this project is, is trying to avoid. Um, you know, if you have to take a packet capture across a uh, hundred nodes, um, you're in a pretty, pretty bad spot. Um, not that that hasn't been done. Um, so here's a blog post about some of the some of the foundations of this project. Um, you know, really a lot of the, the frameworks um, and tools that are out there. You know, they're building on BPF, um, but already because they're they're frameworks or tools, you know, they're coming with opinions and and trying to make things easier, which is great. But um, it just wasn't what we needed. So uh, I I. This is some, some hard won knowledge um, to uh, do BPF from the bottom up. Uh, so this consists of uh, K-Pro BPF programs, um, things like TCP collapse, which uh, doing what I do, I certainly want to know about. Um, a user space C program uh, to communicate with those, those BPF programs, um, obviously via maps, um, and then a Go program that binds to the user space program via CGO. Uh, which, um, and that the, the, the two and three there combined to make a single component. Um, so, you know, at the, at the kernel level, you know, you get like a PID. Um, and so it's important to contextualize that um, with uh, what we can glean from the process in a, in a universal way um, and try to pull things out like pod name and stuff like that and start to contextualize uh, the PID. Um, and then, you know, log interesting events, uh, like uh, how long it's taken active openers to establish a connection, um, and then expose a metrics endpoint uh, for Prometheus to scrape. Um, 
And that is it. So I'll be happy to take questions on Slack now. Thanks. Thank you very much, Brandon. What a fantastic presentation. I, I learned a lot about BPF Insight. Fantastic to see and, ex and I think a great example showcasing that BPF is not just about, or from a networking perspective, is not just about the forwarding and policy aspect, but also enables completely new visibility and observability opportunities. And definitely also want to give the shout out back to the Adobe team. It has been fantastic to work with you guys as we continue to shape the future of eBPF-based networking.